these days, a lot of us are training at home um, because it's not so easy to train when you are not supposed to be near each other. So I have a few suggestions to spice up your training. And one of them is to try another way of striking than you may be used to. And I'll just show you. So this is a fairly generic looking Viking reenactment sword simulator. Um, and with this I will just demonstrate how to strike with the sword rotating around a pivot point on the blade rather than around the wrist or the elbow. Uh, first I will show you what I mean by rotating around the wrist and elbow. So if you were striking like this for instance, the whole motion of the blade is rotating around the elbow. If you were striking like this, the motion of the blade is around, is pivoting around your wrist. You might also pivot it around your fingers, but it's basically the same place. So this is more or less the most usual ways of striking in the reenactment. Uh, you might also say you are pivoting around the shoulder, but you're not solely pivoting around the shoulder. So, uh, if you want to find this pivot point uh, on, the, on the sword, if you hold it like uh, this, and you push the palm from side to side, you will find that the blade has a, a, a point where it wants to almost stand still. And you can do this with any kind of sword and it would have a similar spot, but it's not necessarily the same spot. If you sort of memorize that spot, that's where you want the blade to be turning around. So if you are, if you're striking with that as a pivot point, the sword should be pivoting like so. And that means if you are, have your arm stretched out and you want to strike directly, you should be raising your hand like so. And at first it might seem a bit awkward and it might not seem very fast, but that's probably because um, if you're used to doing taps like this from the wrist, or cuts I should say, snappy cuts like this from the wrist, uh, then it might not seem as fast to begin with. But that can be quite strenuous on your arm. And especially if you do 200 repetitions in your garden with no uh, opponent just doing like this, that's really hard for the, um, for the lower arm. So uh, you might start training it by pulling your sword back here in a, in a bit of a longer strike. And as you pull the pommel forward, you then pull it down and let the sword tip forward. And then as the sword tips over the tipping point, you raise your hand again. That's probably the easiest way to feel the mechanics of this uh, blade pivot uh, strike that you can do. So from your sword shoulder, you pull the pommel forward and then down like so until the blade tips forward it's very light grip I'm holding now that's because I want to feel the motion of the blade it's kind of difficult if you squeeze the grip the whole time to do this because you don't get the sense of the blade wanting to do things and you end up fighting the blade rather than your opponent, imaginary or otherwise. So try holding it like this to begin with. So I'm squeezing it between my thumb and my index and these fingers are merely just controlling it or maybe just holding it up. So from here I, I'm just doing it straight in front of the camera. I 
somewhat close my hand and that's when the strike comes. You'll notice that I'm still holding it in a quite a light grip and the pommel is just squeezing past my wrist here. If I was to turn this around, you'd see that there's air inside. It's only for the absolute strike that I would squeeze, but at that point I would still not put my palm uh, against the, the handle if I can avoid it. Okay, so that was for a Viking uh, reenactment type uh, saw simulator. Now for the act. So, this, this axe is, is something I would call a line fight axe. It's not particularly heavy, but it's not particularly light either. And it's long, which means that, it's, that it has a, a, a quite a lot of um, lever action on your wrist. And if you were to do 200 repetitions, of striking with a pivot from your from your wrist alone, then I can tell you uh, that will probably not be so good for your arm. Um, so in this case, it's really important to work with this the same kind of movement. And since you don't have a pommel, you can't be pulling your pommel anywhere, but you still have the same sense of the end of the grip and you sort of pull it forward and down and that makes the X come forward and as it falls you raise your hand. And just do this very lightly, not in a hard striking way. It should be it should be it should not be necessary to use much more than finger muscles to stop the fall of the X. Otherwise, I think you are putting too much speed into it to begin with. So, rather stay slow and calm. And you'll notice, even though I'm striking from back here, it's not a slow strike. I mean, if I strike from back here, what would look like a maybe a show hit, whatever, that becomes slow. Part of the arm. So, that, it really pulls my body forward and it puts a lot of strain on my lower arm, whereas this takes almost no effort. I, mean, I could be doing this with uh, a stick as well, it's the same motion. See? Okay, so if you can do this with an axe, you certainly you can certainly do it with a sword because the sword has the weight further down. Uh, this particular X has a balance point like this. I'll just show the sword. Wrong side. So, here. This is not, uh, I would consider this a nose heavy sword. Uh, so, but you see, it's not, <laughs> not, and not that far from being opposite. So we would do it the other way around, which is probably more sensible. Okay, so this definitely wants to hit more, which means that it takes a lot more energy and muscle to stop it if you swing it from your wrist or your elbow, I mean pivot it from your wrist or elbow, whereas this takes a little less. But that means that this actually holds a danger that you don't notice that you do it from the wrist and that you are doing it in a way that might harm your your body. This is a um, a sharp simulator. It's not the same as a sharp sword because a sharp sword would have more mass 
around here. This is a prototype for a sharp sword, um, but it works in the sense that if you, if I train with this at home for solo drills, I still heighten my awareness to not get cut. So this means it works. Uh, anyway, um, this is obviously not a Viking type blade, but a medieval type blade, which allows me to have the pommel more underneath my grip here, which means that I can straighten my arm even further than I can with the Viking sword. But still, I, I use the same striking technique. So if I hold my, if I hold the grip here with my thumb and index and just the pinky to, to control the end and I simply pull the pommel and strike forward here same, same technique for striking okay so these three weapons uh, and those, this particular strike from the sword shoulder um, is is just one of the uh, ways where you can strike pivoting the sword around the pivot point. It looks like this. So it's kind of higher on this one. Uh, but there are many other strikes uh, and I think that I will save those for another video but uh, at least start with this and you can sort of feel the mechanics of the strike by experimenting with it. And I recommend that you uh, practice slow at first and much for a much longer time slow than you, you think you must. So try to keep it slow a lot longer than you would and only do the fast strikes when you're really warm and only do a limited amount of fast strikes. So do a lot of slow strikes and a limited amount of fast strikes. So a slow strike would be like so. You just do the whole thing. And it doesn't matter that it feels kind of awkward or weird that you are striking really slow. But it means that you're not spending so much energy to stop the blade. But you're focusing on being accurate and moving like so. Oh, and there's another thing I would like to recommend, and that is to also practice the techniques with your offhand. So, when you've practiced with your, in my case, I'm a righty, so with my right hand, practice with your offhand, in this case, my left hand. So, because this is where you notice where it is more difficult to do it accurately. And it also trains the most important part of fencing, mind. Thank you. I stop. Yeah. <laughs>